Hi, I'm Craig Stevens. New South Wales has an array of aquatic environments, from our pools and beaches through to our rivers, our lakes and our dams. Whether fishing, sailing, swimming or surfing, our culture and active lifestyle lends itself to aquatic participation. I've spent many, many hours in the water and appreciate the need for all Australians, particularly our young people, to be trained in water safety. The Water Safety Challenge will provide a practical, easy to administer proficiency assessment to support schools in the planning and conducting of unstructured aquatic activities and programs. Thanks for playing your part in supporting our students to participate safely in Australia's great aquatic environments. The Water Survival Challenge has been developed to assist schools in assessing the aquatic proficiency of students prior to their participation in unstructured aquatic activity. The challenge incorporates the key foundation skills that are critical to aquatic survival. These skills are water confidence, survival skills, safe water entry and exit, and elementary swimming skills. The Water Survival Challenge must be completed by students as a full sequence. The challenge comprises five key elements. Each element is demonstrated in this DVD. Students should be provided with an opportunity to withdraw from the Water Survival Challenge at any time. It is recommended that school staff allocate a minimum of 30 minutes for a group of approximately 100 students to complete the challenge. If at any stage the student appears apprehensive, distressed or concerned, they should be removed from the activity and a yellow wristband applied. The slide-in entry is a safe and controlled form of entry into both known and unknown depths. It allows the student to orientate themselves to the depth of the water and the temperature. Students sit on the edge of the pool with their feet in the water. Unassisted, students hold the side of the pool. Students twist their body to face the wall whilst lowering the body into the water. Students feel for the bottom with their feet. Note, students should not drop into the water. When their feet are grounded, the student turns away from the edge and walks for five metres. Check the student's balance. If a student cannot balance in the water, they should not be allowed to enter the water for any activities. Proficient swimming of 25 metres enables students to reach a point of safety from any point within a 50 metre pool. Each student should complete 25 metres using recognisable strokes. Any stroke may be selected, including freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, survival backstroke or side stroke. Students should swim in the lane closest to the teacher to enable rapid intervention. Body position, breathing and arm and leg actions should resemble the chosen strokes. If at any stage the student is not demonstrating a recognisable stroke, they should be removed from the water immediately and a yellow wristband applied. Dog paddle or unrecognisable techniques should result in immediate removal from the water. These forms of movement through the water are not satisfactory for unstructured aquatic activity. Students that stop and stand are to receive a yellow band. On achieving 25 metres, each student is to complete the survival sequence. The survival sequence identifies the capacity of the student to keep their head above the waterline so they can call for help. Students should change positions from floating to sculling. Students should call for help in a loud, clear voice. Help! Help! It's all right. You'll be okay. Keep 
Keep your leg. Miss, we need a help you. Voice rescues are the safest form of rescue and provide reassurance to a distressed individual. The voice rescue should be the first type of rescue attempted as it reduces the risk to the rescuer. The rescuer should call out instructions to the person in difficulty to reassure them. They can also provide suggestions to get the students back to safety. Rescuers should maintain eye contact with the person in difficulty to ensure their condition is monitored and provides reassurance. Primary school aged children are encouraged not to enter the water themselves to perform a rescue. Primary students should alert an adult that assistance is required. From the edge of the pool, students should demonstrate that they are capable of climbing out of the water over the edge of the pool or moving along the pool edge to an appropriate exit point, for example a ladder, ramp or stairs. Students must demonstrate they can remove themselves from the pool. Those students who have successfully completed the challenge should be issued with a blue band. A blue band allows students to take part in any unstructured aquatic activity for the day. Students who did not complete the water survival challenge should be issued with a yellow wristband. These students may only take part in unstructured activities held in water no greater than waist depth. There you go.